Welcome everybody to the Bournemouth International Centre and today's weigh-in in this very building on Sunday night. It is the return of the king. Chris Billam Smith makes the first defence of his WBO World Cruiserweight title in front of his adoring Bournemouth fans that he won amid such great scenes live on Sky at the stadium at Bournemouth FC back at the end of May. His choice of opponent has raised a few eyebrows, not least with, with Johnny Nelson. Matthias Masternak is a very tough, experienced fighter. He's been around the top 10, top 15, around world level for the last decade. And all week, really, has had the look of a man who can't quite believe his luck that this opportunity has come along. He definitely feels like Christmas has come early and that William Smith has made a big mistake here. So that looks set to be a very, very interesting fight. Ringwalk's expected around about 9 o'clock on Sunday night. Just so you know, the cover is starting at 6 o'clock. Elsewhere on the bill, we've got Ben Whitaker and Lauren Price looking to finish the year in style and then crack on to big years in 2024. A good fight for the vacant English Super Well to eight title between Lee Cutler and Obi Benike, and a second pro outing for Fran Hennessy after she impressed on her debut at York Hall a couple of months ago. With me, Johnny Nelson and Matt Macklin. Johnny, this is your old belt. You know about defending it. You did it 13 times. And I know that you were surprised by the fact that Mateusz Masternak was, was picked for this. And it's, I mean, you're nervous about it. I'm very nervous about it. Look, I love coming to Bournemouth. I want Chris Bill and Smith to pull this off, but I, when, this is, this is, is a banana skin. There's more chance of Chris Bill and Smith losing than winning. And so in the same way, I'm saying, and, and I'm saying, um, uh, Masternak is, is the guy that I'm leaning towards to win this. If Chris pulls off this win, you've got to give him maximum props because this is the best opponent he's boxing in his whole career, as far as I'm concerned, uh, for Chris Bill and Smith. So to go in there as his first defense is a world title, he's not even had time to get comfortable being champion. But, but what he'll do for him mentally, if he pulls this off, he'll raise him to that level to say, right, I deserve to be here. This is me. Look what I've just done this guy that nobody wants to box. The heavyweight shoes him as their sparring partner, and he doesn't get sacked out for a couple of days. He's there for the whole duration of training camp, which means he's doing a good job. So Masternick has had more knockouts than, than, than Bill and Smith has had fights. He's got steeped in experience as a professional fighter. He's been there. When we got him on stage the other day talking about the fight, he couldn't believe his luck. He was like, he was like, he, 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 he just thought you made a big mistake. He's a bogeyman. And so Chris Bill Smith has to have a career best performance to make the Bournemouth fans happy. And Matt, why, why has he done it then? Why, why has Bill and Smith done it? My, my theory is, he's not the kind of person who's going to become complacent and get carried away with himself. But my theory is that just to keep those juices flowing, to keep that knot of fear in his stomach, to make sure, basically, that he doesn't take anyone lightly, he's chosen to go in deep. But, I mean, that could be a double-edged sword. Yeah, I, I think also as well, he, he um, you know, some people might have said, I heard some people saying, ah, the stars aligned for him with the Coley. It was one of those nights for him. It was the Bournemouth, it was outdoors, it was a messy fight. But I think Masternak being, you know, a legitimate, really, a top contender, like you said, I think, was he in the top 15 for the last 10 years? and nobody's ever offered him a voluntary defence. So, that, you know, that, that shows you what a real contender he is. And uh, I think Philip Smith will have to be at the top of his game. Uh, if he is at the top of the game with the Bournemouth crowd behind him, I think I make him a slight favourite. Um, but it is a really tough fight. But I, I think once you get, once you stepped up to that level, you're better off staying up there. You know, you're better off having that that nerves, that little bit of fear in your stomach going into the fight because it makes you perform to the best. So, Johnny, in, in terms of the age of Masternak, there's not that much between the two of them in age, actually, but there's a lot between them in terms of ring age, if you like, because Masternak's had 52 fights. A lot of them have been hard fights. He's had six in the last five years. So not, it's not a massive rate of activity as he's got older, but you don't necessarily need to be boxing loads as you get older. What I'm looking at with him is that he's never been the quickest. He's never really had any gears. He's certainly not going to have them now. Does Billum Smith need to keep this tempo high? Yeah. And the, and the only thing you lose as you get older, well, the first thing you lose as you get older is pace. Pace, and, and, and because Masterlick is still fit enough, strong enough to do all the things he did, but he's not got the time and the pace he had. And you see this with most fighters when they, things start to slip away slowly but surely. What what Chris Dillon Smith have to do is, is keep Masterlick on the back foot. He's a better offensive fighter than he's a defensive fighter. So if he's on the back foot, that doesn't suit somebody that's 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 slowing down. It doesn't suit somebody that's that's a little older. You need to try and keep your feet. 
keep your keep your keep your stability, your balance, and move forward. Do what's natural for you. So for for, for Bill and Smith, he needs to keep the, the pressure on. When Masnet was doing a public workout, and Chris was on our my right hand side, and we were both watching him, and and Masnet, what I assess from it, he stands like a, a mixed martial arts fighter, elbows away from his uh, uh, rib cage, his guard is wide. In that, you see the shot straight through, but that might be the obvious shot that most opponents see that go for. Chris needs to be sharp and cute enough to dummy and switch it into a left hook, left up to the head, left up to the body, but make out only a straight, straight shot. I don't know if Chris is that intelligent, has that, has that, has that boxing IQ to do that. I know he's tough. He reminds me of a, a cruiserweight version of Vitaly Klitschko. So he's got to be in a bull in a china shop and he's got to push uh, Masanek back because Masanek could be closer, better on the inside than he is on the outside being pushed back. It's a hard fight mentally as well as physically and Chris's last two fights have been very hard and so and this is what damages a fighter when you keep getting in hard fight after hard fight after hard fight one day it's going to give so in terms of pushing him back Matt how does he how does he do that because one way to do it is to use the jab Chris is the taller of the two we generally don't see Chris use that jab all that much but it is there it is a weapon if he if he needs it we know he likes to get close likes to get low likes to fight on the inside but maybe he needs to do things not completely differently, but maybe mix it up a bit more than we've seen him. Yeah, I think, look, maybe, maybe it's a case, maybe he, he struggles to push him back initially, if Masternick's stronger physically, we don't know until they get in there. But then, you know, if he can't push him back, he at least wants to sort of stand his ground but without getting involved in a slugfest. So maybe use his jab, box fight him, you know, pick, pick his moments when to box, pick his moments when to fight. Um, but I think, I think Johnny sort of hit the nail on the head. I think the key is pace, tempo, you know, Masternick, you know, he's not the quickest anyway. And as you get older and, and in activity, he's not going to have that sharpness, that speed. And I think that uh, Billings should be able to beat him to the punch, beat him to the punch, and also finish the exchanges as well. He should be too young and fresh for him. And, and out of all the champions, all the other fighters, I look at Chris Billingsmith as the weakest link. He's a food, he's a new kid on the block. He's a new champion, big kid. That, that's a, a soft touch. So, so therefore, Masternick and other fighters will disrespect Chris because they've seen him lose. He's a new, boy, a new kid on the block. So the only way you underestimate his maturity as a fighter. Chris now has to be, grow up and, and, and understand I'm a champion for a reason. You know, it was hard work, determination. And he needs to shock those fighters because and make him respect him. Or Patai will be looking at him. Mr. Drapp will be looking and thinking, I love him. You know, Masternick looking thinking, I can't believe it. I've got you, I've got the soft touch. Because on paper, he looks easy easiest one to be out of all the champions. Sunday night is his chance to, to change people's minds and say, I'm not the easiest one. I'm not the guy you want to pick to fight the world title. Yeah, I mean, I, I, personally, I feel that's one of the reasons why he's picked him. I think he wants he wants that respect and he wants to make sure that mentally he's exactly where he needs to be for the fight because we've seen it so many times, haven't we, that if you don't really think that the other person's too much of a threat, you still do all the training like you always say, Matt. You still do the groundwork, you still do your runs. But if you don't really, if you haven't got that fear in you, basically, you can have a problem. Yeah, you need that bit of an edge, you know. Um, the other thing, I think, I suppose, for the, you know, the good thing about Masternak, if we're going to, you know, he's a tough fight, but a good thing about him, he's not awkward. He's very sort of orthodox textbook, so easy to prepare for as well. Yeah, true. I think we do know what we're going to get from him. So let, let's have a look at some of the, the other fights on the card. We see the return of Ben Whittaker. Last time we saw him was back in May, so it's been quite a long time out due to injury. And his career's been a bit like that so far. It's been stop-start. And the thing that's most important for him, Johnny, for, for Whittaker, is it's just a bit of consistency now. If he can get a good win tomorrow night and then box at least three, hopefully four times, I mean, who knows, maybe even more than that next I year. I totally agree, Andy, and I think I, my worry for Ben is he has all the talent in the world. You can see the growth and development of this fighter. The problem is he's one of those fighters that keeps getting injured. An injury may may scupper his, his true potential. So so in this time, he's got to do things right. He's got to make sure he's squeezing in as much uh, experience as, in, as impossible. As in, like, he fights Sunday night. He needs another day. Hopefully get him out in January. And then get if the fight's not too hard, hopefully get him out. You're right, four or five times next year. Because within a year, Ben Whittaker wants to be saying, right, like, I'm fighting for the British title. Within a year after that, he wants to be saying, I want to box for boxing for the European title. He needs to 
he needs that kind of fast track. He has the ability, he needs the fight, and give him the opportunity. This guy is a consistently growing fighter and has all the ability going for him. Unfortunately, it's injury that is, is, is hampering the development of his career. I agree, I think he needs to move quickly, he's mature, he's experienced from the amateurs, yeah. you know, what we're waiting for here, he, he, he's, he, he has been injury prone, so I think you've just got to move him as fast as possible now. I mean, you look at that light heavyweight scene, you look at Buatzi Aziz on February the 3rd, and then Anthony Yard's kind of lying in wait, Lyndon Arthur's got a big fight coming up, Craig Richards, a really good fighter, there's a, there's a, there's a load of lads kind of like on the train aren't they yeah, and, and he needs to catch them up and get on that train he does but they've all got a bit of, they've all you know got a bit some miles on the clock and you know Ben isn't a young kid you know what I mean he's mature he's been in the Olympics like it, you know just as they're starting to peak and come down he's ready for it it's like, it's like I suppose it's like Lauren Price you look at uh, uh, Natasha Jonas and Michaela Meyer. They don't want to be looking back at back at her because N N because Lauren is dangerous. She's just lacking in experience. Ben is dangerous. He's lacking in experience. So they need to get. If they were, if I was them, I'd fight him now before he gets the experience. Because when he gets a few more fights on his belt and he's got the experience, he's a problem for every one of them. And I like all the other fights that ride out. He's a problem for every one of them. Just like Lauren is, she's a problem. So they need to avoid him. Uh, they, they have need to jump on him ASAP, you know, and get this over and done with, or avoid him like the plate. We'll have a chat about Lauren in a sec, but in, in terms of the opponent for Whitaker, I like Stephen Dreadeye because he's come here to rip up the script. He believes he can win. It doesn't matter what other people think about that. Sparring stories are always great. Was it supposed to be six rounds? Was it supposed to be eight? But what we do know is that that spa, however it went, it must have been competitive enough because otherwise they wouldn't have taken him as an opponent. Yeah, and you could tell by the way they were, the body language of the two of them. He doesn't, he doesn't fear him. He's not overawed by his reputation of being, you know, the Olympic silver medalist, etc. He thinks you have Sparger, and yeah, it, whether I had the better or I didn't, I, 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 I could live with, I can live with you, I can hold my own. So he, that, that's how he. he that's what I got anyway from the body language of the two of them and from what he said as well. I felt like he at least held his own in that spa. And you know what? Sparring don't mean I got beat up by most of my sparring partners when I was champion. You know, they, they come in because sparring, you step your game up when it comes to fighting. You know, so and, and so sparring, you can't read anything about the, the gloves are bigger. You, 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 you're building blocks. You're preparing yourself for a future goal. So if you're, you're going to take so much on sparring to think we had some good competitive sparring. You read the strength. You read the mentality of a fighter. But do not ever think that is a fight I'm getting in the ring with the fight. So Lauren Price is in action against Sylvia Bordeaux. We saw her against Michaela Mayer. She gave Michaela Mayer 10 good rounds. She didn't win any of them, but she was competitive. Jonas Mayer coming up, of course, in January. Lauren Price wants to fight the winner of that fight. She needs to take care of business against Bordeaux, obviously. But the kind of metrics we have in boxing, it's not like other sports where we could compare times and distances. It's, it's often about common opponents. And what we're looking for is, can Lauren Price do a better job on Bordeaux than Michaela Mayer did? Because she feels, Lauren, like she is ready to go. Well, she, again, she, she's she mature. She's very, very experienced uh, in terms of amateur pedigree, uh, ability. She's beaten a lot of these girls who have, who have achieved more and, and been professional longer back in the day in the amateurs already so her, her self-belief and confidence she just believes she's destined to go all the way and go through weights and everything so I think she's I think it's the right fight at the right state the right fight at the right time for her uh, and, and it'll be hard to make a comparison unless her opponent is competitive because if someone wants to get in there to survive, someone that wants to get in there to spoil it, again, it's going to be hard to see, to make the comparison between Lauren and, and Natasha and, uh, and Michaela Meyer, you know, to, to measure it. So so if she's in there with someone that really goes for it and thinks, right, then you'll see her true skill coming through. I think she's a bag of trouble, Lauren. Uh, I think she'll be a bag of trouble for everybody that's out there. And so so it's just how she gets the job done. If you can shut the fight down, that's trying to survive. That's even better. But I, we want to see, be able to measure her, measure her skill against Natasha, against Michaela. 
And another thing I like as well is, is the fact that I think she's kind of just found her voice at exactly the right time because anyone could come out of the gate saying they're going to do this, that and the other when they turn pro. And there's nothing wrong with it when they do. I, you know, I enjoy, you know, I enjoy hearing it, but she's waited a little bit and now she's ready to pounce and it just kind of, it works. Yeah, well, I think, she, you know, in the amateurs, she doesn't have to push herself out there. I think she's probably realising in the professional game, it's a business as well, it's show business. You, you have got to push yourself a little bit, even if it's not necessarily, doesn't come natural to you. So I think she's, uh, yeah, she's bided her time. <laughs> I think, right, she, like you say, she's found her voice now. OK, so let's get today's weigh-in underway. And I'll hand over now to guide us expertly through proceedings. As always, here's Big Mo. Good afternoon, Bournemouth, and welcome back to the Bournemouth International Centre tonight, or tomorrow's site, for the championship main event between Mateos Masternak and Chris Billum-Smith, but today's site for the official weigh-ins. I want to remind you all that tomorrow night's bout is indeed sold out, but you can watch it live on Sky Sports and NBC's Peacock TV around the world. Also. Tomorrow's show is going to be a slightly earlier one. We anticipate the first fight beginning live on Sky Sports Stream at 5.30 p.m. with a main event ring walk at 9 o'clock. I would like to thank today's official provider of the weigh-ins, Wow Hydrate. We're going to bring up every single fighter for every single bout tomorrow night, allow them to weigh in, pose off, and face off before they go to war tomorrow night here in Bournemouth. All bouts are promoted by Ben Shalom and Boxer. We begin when the light heavyweight division scheduled for six three-minute rounds. Introducing first to the scales by way of Prague, by way of Nataline in the Ukraine, please welcome Dimitro Fedas. Dimitro Fadas with an 8-4-2 record. We've seen him against British opponents a fair bit recently. Has gone down the stretch with the likes of Poddy McCrory, Carol Talma. Official weight, 12 stone, 13 pounds with Dimitro Fedas. So this one listed at light heavyweight. And his opponent. He is undefeated, fighting out of Southampton, England, ladies and gentlemen, the Saint Louis Edmondson. So from just down the road, Louis Edmondson always brings plenty of support with him. Official weight, 12 stone, 12 pounds for the Saint Louis Edmondson. So Louis Edmondson had, had plenty to say yesterday, Johnny. You had a bit of swag when you were fighting. He had a ton of it yesterday, didn't he? Sunglasses inside, not a manoeuvre that I try and pull off. But he immediately called Ben Whitaker's name. He's looking ahead. He, needs, he knows he needs to get past this tomorrow night against Fedas, but he's already got a target in mind, and that target is Whitaker. We actually spoke to each other before yesterday, and he said he was complaining about Ben not wanting to fight, and you know they tried to put the fight on him. I said, well, get yourself recognised. Get people out there. He's, he's selling himself. He's the first fighter I know that's called Ben Whitaker. Her out. He's the first fight I know that's got in Ben Whittaker's face. So, so again, it creates a bit of interest, creates a bit of a challenge. And so, for this young man here, he's desperate for that fight. And that fight, he's doing that yesterday, has made that fight more uh, possible than before, than it ever was before. So let's see how he performs tomorrow night. He's got to get the win, Matt, and, and ideally look good doing it. But but I'm always a fan of fighters who come to events with a narrative in mind, with, with an ideal chain of events, and he's, he's got that. He knows what he wants. Yeah, exactly. He's uh, I know Ben, ben Whitaker's a... No one's... You know, he's a tough fighter, isn't he? He's a tricky style. He's very elusive. But this kid's undefeated. He believes in himself. He's calling him out. You got you, I think you've got to respect that. OK. Let's see what he's got to say. He's with Andy. Louis, fired up, ready to go. Nearly uh, caught a few shots there myself. You've uh, made quite an impression this week. I think I've seen more clips of you on social media than anywhere else. Talking the talk, but you've got to win tomorrow if you're going to get these big fights. 100%. Um, obviously, there's been a bit of commotion, as everyone's seen. And um, But yeah, my eyes on the ball for Sunday. Got to get a good job done there. And then we can um, move forward and hopefully have a big 2024. Just seen Dimitro Fedas there. It's the first time we've seen him on fight week. What are you expecting from him? What have you got to do to beat him? It's got to be me. I'll turn up and do what I do and that's enough.
Good stuff. Wish you all the best of luck. That's one. Thank you. Cheers. Testing. <laughs> we now move to the women's bantamweight division, scheduled for six two-minute rounds. Introducing first to the scales from Adalia Maria Cordoba, Argentina. Please welcome La Gringa, Lucrecia, Belin, Arieta. Lucrecia Arieta. Decent record. Experienced fighter. Official weight, eight stones, seven pounds. For La Gringa, Lucrecia Arieta. And her opponent, fighting out of Seven Oaks, Kent, England. Following up a successful debut, she looks to remain undefeated. Here is Francesca Hennessy. Official weight, eight stone, eight pounds for Francesca Hennessy. It was quite the debut she made a York call a couple of months ago, and you can see how much she's just enjoying the spotlight at, at, at the way. And she really, she really did catch the eye. And it wasn't just a ring walk; she could fight. Yeah, no, she, she came out fast, and, you know, performed, uh, and like I say, plenty of personality and charisma there as well, which is, you know, will help her uh, sell herself as an attraction. It's so important when you get the opportunity, Johnny, like she did at York Hall, to open the show to make an impression. And I'm, I'm a proper fanboy. When she came in, you saw all the ex uh, experienced talent that was there. You know, you had the band of Martian, everybody sat there quiet, pin the drop, all willing her to do well. She's such a popular fighter and she's such a nice kid. It's ridiculous. I actually think I love her story. I love her journey. I hope she does really well. Uh, I think she has, has, has so much talent. The stuff I hear about her in the gym as a youngster is ridiculous. And I look at her, I, I speak to her and say, look, just keep doing what you're doing. Look at boxing now, you're looking at boxing. Still be energetic, still love it, and then you'll enjoy everything you do. Great fight. I know her dad, Mick Kennedy, a very experienced man in the boxing business, of course, was always keen to turn her over professional quickly because they were getting a little bit frustrated with how things were going in the amateurs. They felt they had the rough end of the stick with a few decisions at times and that pro boxing would suit her more and on the evidence of the one fight we've seen so far so we don't want to get too carried away that does seem to be the case she's got Bradley Skeet very good fighter himself of course in the corner but Arietta has come in shape as I say she's an experienced fighter has been in with some good opposition he reluctantly there accepts the handshake okay let's hear from Fran she's with Andy Fran still all smiles what is the one thing that you took away from the whole experience last time of fight week and these sort of events that you're using to your advantage this time around it's uh, it's not new to you anymore you've done this no, I just, I know what the atmosphere is like, I know what it feels like in the pro ranks now, so, yeah, I was relaxed on my debut, but I'm going to be even more relaxed this time. What did we have last time, flair mixed with aggression, uh, more of the same tomorrow? Definitely more of the same, that, that's my style at the end of the day, it's not put on, that's, that's just what I do, it's very natural for me to do that. It was uh, almost a faultless debut, is there anything that you and Bradley Skeet, your trainer, have focused on that we might see this time? Definitely, you know, we're always learning and practicing in the gym. There's always, there's so much more I've got to give. So I'm not going to spoil it now. I'll surprise you all tomorrow, but definitely I'm going to put on the show. Look forward to it, Fran. Good luck. Thank you, Andy. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we move to the welterweight division. Scheduled for 10 three-minute rounds. It is for the WBC International Silver Welterweight Championship. Introducing first... He is undefeated with 11 wins versus no losses. Fighting out of Accra, Ghana. Please welcome Musa, Senior Award Daddy Lawson. Musa Lawson, undefeated, high knockout ratio. Arrived in the UK nice and early for this fight. He knows all about McKinson. Official weight, 10 stone, 3 pounds for Signora Wardaddy, Musa Lawson.
taking the opportunity to pose for a few photos. And his opponent comes to us with an impressive professional record of 25 wins versus just one loss, with four of those wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Portsmouth, England, introducing the former WBC international silver champion and the former WBO European and WBO global welterweight champion. He is known as the problem. Here is Michael McKinson. McKinson, another fighter from not too far away. Portsmouth man. Official weight, 10 stones, 6 pounds for Michael McKinson. It's an interesting one, McKinson, Johnny, isn't he? Because he's got an absolute ton of ability. We saw him against Virgil Ortiz. He was happy to go in deep that night, gave a good account of himself. Since then, that was August last year, this will be his fourth fight since. Which, when you're up at that kind of a level, you're valuing yourself at that kind of a level, that's a pretty decent rate of activity. It's about opportunity. And, and uh, he's, he's the kind of fighter that grasps those opportunities with both hands. He has he's had, has experience, the one thing you can't buy, borrow, pretend to have. So he's a dangerous opponent for any domestic fighter going because he's willing to, to step in there and get the opportunity. And he's a decent fighter as well. He's still trained, he's still um, as ambitious as, as most fighters that are just starting out of their career. He's one of these guys, Matt, who, who definitely would be one of those that we would talk about being at least fine for the presidency of the Who Needs Him Club. Yeah, oh, oh, top, top of the class of that. <laughs> you know, he doesn't bring a lot of money or titles or, the, or you know, stuff like that. But he's, and he's a really difficult, tricky, awkward fight. Even if you were good at beating him, you are probably going to look bad. You know, so he's, uh, yeah, he's, he's right up there with the top of the Who Needs Him Club. But what I do like about him is, is that he is active. You know, he isn't pricing himself out of fights. He's staying busy, winning, winning, winning. He's fought loads of undefeated guys. You know what I mean? He's he's not been afraid to... He's backing himself all the time. He's staying busy. Like I say, almost like a bit of a throwback in that regard. Absolutely. His attitude is tremendous. And he, and he is looking to take fighters out. That's what he was saying to us yesterday. He's won his last few by by stoppage. I think he knows that the, the entertainment factor is, uh, is a big, big thing. Michael... Great reception from the crowd to be expected just down the road from Portsmouth. You've got a long career now. You've seen all sorts of styles, but I think we're expecting this could be anything tomorrow. Musa Lawson's got a great record on paper, but it's the unknown. So are you, are you prepared for the unknown? I'm well prepared. In my, I think I've been a pro nine years. I've fought all types of styles, all shapes and sizes, um, and I'm a good fighter. So I'll get the job done no matter what. In PG language, what did you say to him there at the head-to-head? -head? I said he was small. He, he, he come in light. Um, and I told him there's one more sleep. If he is the big puncher that his record suggests, how do you counteract that? Listen, I've been in the ring with bigger punchers. Nice belt on the line as well, pushing towards a, another world ranking. That's uh, obviously an added little benefit as well. Yeah, like I said before, this is must win for me. Um, I'm very, very focused on tomorrow. I know it's an important job to do, but I'm very capable and I know I'm going to do it. Good luck. Thank you. We now move slightly up to the super welterweight division. Ten three-minute rounds for the vacant English super welterweight championship. Introducing first to the scales, he boasts a professional record of eight wins versus two losses and one draw. Fighting out of Acton, London, England, please welcome Kingsley Obi Egbunike. So this is a title fight, as Big Mo said, for the vacant English super welterweight title. Obi Egbenike, who won an eliminator late last year against Josh Ejak Povey. Official weight 10 stone, 12 pounds for Obi Kingsley Egbenike. So a couple of pounds inside the limit there. He looks ripped to an absolute and shred. His opponent comes to us with a professional record of 13 wins versus just one loss with seven of those wins coming by way of knockout he fights right here in Bournemouth England ladies and gentlemen please welcome the former southern area super welterweight champion Lee Chaos Cutler Lee Cutler performing in front of a home crowd as he did at Bournemouth Football Club at the end of May 
with that win against Stanley Stannard that qualifies him for this. Official weight 10 stone, 13 pounds for Chaos, Lee Cutler. So we have a contest. They've both made weight. The vacant English title as Sam Gilly vacated the box for the Commonwealth. That's what's on the line. I love this fight. It's a really good fight, Johnny, because Cutler loves boxing at home. He likes the pressure that comes with it. He knows there's a lot of expectation on him. Egbenike is one of these guys who he doesn't care about going on the road. I saw him put in a really good performance in Belarus during COVID. And the shape he's in, he fancies this too. It's got excellent fight written all over it. I remember uh, bumping into, into Lee four or five years ago when I came down here with, with some friends. And he said, you're going to be talking about me sooner or later. And he's so ambitious. He's so hungry. And he wants to go to the top. He wants he, he wants to fights, especially at home. Another one of those fighters that love fighting in Bournemouth. He wants to be a local celebrity as well as a champion. So this kind of stuff, he's made for it. He moved from long-time trainer Kev Thornley, who was with him in the Amateurs League Cutler, to Josh Pritchard, so McGuigan's gym to train alongside Chris Billingsmith about eight weeks ago. It's interesting that to me, because his last fight was the end of last May. I don't know what's happened. I haven't asked him, because it's not really any of my business, to be honest, but to make the switch that close to a fight, possibly not ideal. Yeah, well, maybe it was in the pipeline for, for longer than that, and he just kind of made the decision or announced it and, and actually teamed up and started working together eight weeks ago. Um, but, you know, eight weeks is, is, is a long time. You, got, you can get plenty of work done in that time. It's right, it's anything more than that. You're probably overdoing it. Well, he's confident he'll be able to give us something new, something we haven't seen before from him tomorrow night. Sunday night boxing. We're on there at 6 o'clock, Sky Sports Arena. Lee, another great reception, sold a lot of tickets to be expected. What do you want to show your fans tomorrow? A career best performance from me, just a move to, uh, move to a new gym now in the Griggan gym under Josh Pritchard. You're going to see a different Lee Cutler tomorrow night. It, chaos isn't an ironic nickname, but is it organised chaos we're looking for tomorrow? Definitely. Will you give us a prediction? Can you win this one inside the distance or is it just winning uh, by any means necessary? I can win however I want to and I'm going to do that tomorrow night. And to become English champion, what would that mean? Unbe unbelievable and just another step in the right direction. Wish you all the best of luck. Let's, uh, let's bring in Obi. <laughs> Obi, I know you want to let your fist do the talking, so I won't keep you long, but uh, hostile territory, hostile crowd, doesn't make a difference to you? Doesn't faze me, doesn't faze me. Will you give us a prediction? Uh, and don't just say winning is all that matters. Can you win this one inside the distance? I'm a boxer, so I'm a box. That's it. And to become English champion? The world, man, the world. Good stuff. Let your fist do the talking. <laughs> He's made Andy work all week. He's made Andy work now, all week. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we move to the women's welterweight division. Introducing first to the scales, she holds a professional record of 11 wins versus three losses and one draw, with three of those wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Salgaredo, Veneto, Italy. Introducing the former European super lightweight champion, Silvia Borto. So Sylvia Bordeaux we saw against Michaela Mayer back in September where she went to 10 rounds. She's won a European title at super lightweight. Now up at welterweight. Official weight 10 stone, two pounds, five ounces for Sylvia Bordeaux. So her weight there is not a surprise. 10 stone two. And her opponent fighting out of the red corner tomorrow night. She comes to us with a perfect undefeated record of five wins versus no losses. Fighting out of Estrad Minak, Wales. She is the Olympic gold medalist. She is the MBE. And she is the first ever women's British champion. Ladies and gentlemen, Lauren Price. Price, of course, won that British title against Kirsty Babington in Birmingham back in May and she is looking to move onwards and upwards quick she wants the winner of Natasha Jonas against Michaela Mayer she must win tomorrow night first she's well aware of that official weight 10 stone 6 pounds for Lauren Price so a pound inside that welterweight limit and it's the speed of Price that impresses most isn't it I think speed, timing, ring savvy, uh, just all-round ability. 
Karis Harting stall with her, of course, this week. Both of them looking to have big years in 2024. But Johnny, this is a this is a good fight for her. Bordeaux showed us what she could do against Michaela Mayer. She was competitive in every round without winning any of those rounds. And she knows that this is a good showcase for her to put up a good performance. But as we said at the top, what we're looking for really is for Lauren Price to do a number on her. Yeah, that's what we want. We, 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 we heard it. We heard her say, you know what, this is my ambition. This is what I want. We all got excited about it. At last, she's vocalising it. Now, we want to see it. We want to see how her intentions. Sunday night when she gets in there, she wants to go in there with bad intentions to make a massive impression. And in that, she gets the stoppage win. She has every right to, to scream from the rootstocks about buying either McKay or Meyer or, or Natasha Jonas. So, so right now, there's always stumbling blocks. There's always times that things can fall over. But I think she gets the job done, gets it done well. This is, she's well beyond this. Lauren, the lucky one. Uh, obviously, a big fight for you tomorrow. It's been great to hear you talking about the horizon and the future. That all goes away if you don't win. Uh, how do you guard against complacency tomorrow? No, my fully, my fully focus, you know, is on tomorrow night. I want a good, solid performance. Um, you know, I've had a great camp, and I just want to show how good I am tomorrow. And then, like you said, get the job done and move on to 2024. But my full focus is on tomorrow night. You and Robert have obviously hatched the game plan, and you probably won't tell us too much. But what should we be looking out for more than anything? No, I just think I just got to do Lauren Price, you know, my skill, my speed, and uh, every department, you know, I've been working on. So I just want to show little improvements like I have each fight and, yeah, carry on the journey. We're lazy, so we'll make the comparison, but obviously your performance will be judged against that of Michaela Mayer, who went the distance. Is that part of your um, thought process, just uh, to try and just go one better than Michaela, or is that not important to you? Not important to me. I just got to, you know, focus on myself, get the win, look good doing it, and then move on in 2024. Wish you all the best of luck. Thank you very much. And now, ladies and gentlemen, back to the light heavyweight division scheduled for eight three-minute rounds live tomorrow night here in Bournemouth. Introducing first to the scales, he comes to us with a professional record of 11 wins versus two losses and one draw, with three of those wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Milan, Lombardia, Italy, please welcome Stephen Leonetti Dredai. Official weight, 12 stone, 8 pounds for Steven Dredai. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner tomorrow night. He is one of the fastest rising superstars in the world. He comes to us with a perfect undefeated record of four wins versus no losses, with three of those wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Darleston, West Midlands, England, introducing the Olympic silver medalist, Ben, the surgeon, Whitaker. <laughs> It's been a while since we've seen him. It was back in May on home turf in Birmingham. It's been frustrating for him. Injury has been an obstacle in his career up until this point. And we need this to be the slipstream into some regular activity. Official weight, 12 stones, 6 pounds for the surgeon, Ben Whitaker. 12 stones, 6 there for Whitaker. He looks in absolutely frightening condition there, Matt. Yeah, absolutely shredded, shredded. Um, good to see him coming in at, on the limit, or just under even, the light heavyweight limit, so he'll have no problems uh, as he moves forward. No, it's a good habit to get used to. We know the story that was discussed at the press conference yesterday. Dread Eye was actually at that Wolverhampton show a few weeks ago. He'd been around the West Midlands. They had to spar the pair of them. Was it eight rounds? Was it six rounds? No one really knows. 
But what we do know is we said at the start that it must have been competitive enough or Team Whitaker wouldn't have taken him as an opponent. And the good thing about somebody like him for Whitaker, Johnny, is that when you're Whitaker, you want someone who is coming not just in hope but with some expectation that they can actually do something. Ben Whitaker, the harder the opposition, the better we'll see. Uh, the harder the opposition, the, the, we, the, the more you'll see his true potential. And I think right now, he's having to make sure he stays on top because if he thinks he's fighting fights that are beneath him, that's the, when the time, the time is going to make mistakes. So, so he start, he needs the challenges now. He needs to be in, put in a position where each fight is a challenge. There's something new to learn about himself just to keep him on top. He's a, he's a, ta a naturally talented fighter and he knows that. There's a bit of feeling between these two. You can see that. I saw Dread Eye fight in Albania on that Florian Marku undercard uh, a little while ago now, last August it was. And he knows his way around the ring, that's for sure. Ben Whitaker, that was a fierce old uh, face-off there. And I know you're all smiles and you're a happy-go-lucky guy, but it's business now. One thing I would like to say is incredible shape uh, on the scales there. How, I mean, it's testament to your professionalism and your dedication, but there's not much else to come off that frame, surely? Yeah, I have to thank my team. Uh, Joel B. Sugar, I'm a strength and conditioning coach, Jamie Whitaker, got me into some great shape and I'm, I'm ready to go. Yeah, ready to go and I'm sure it's been uh, a countdown and the body's held up and you're looking very, very good. What sort of performance can you show us tomorrow? Truthfully, I'm just looking forward to the five guys after, man, so I'm going to try and make it as quick as possible and then we can go and get some burgers. Shout out to all the other local burger joints in the area. In terms of the performance, uh, Stephen Dredhigh, he's talked the talk. You've got a bit of a target on your head. You've always had that target, but do you want to sort of punish him for those words that he said yesterday and today? Yeah, it's going to be a beat down from round one to whatever rounds continue. Um, I want him to come game. I want him to bring a fight. And let's put a show on for the great fans. My timeline is dominated by you at the moment and people calling you out. It's uh, probably where you want to be, isn't it? Because if people weren't calling your name, you were probably doing something wrong. Yeah, I feel, I feel like Justin Bieber back in the day. You know, I'm getting all the little tags, all the little fangirls and fanboys. It's kind of nice. Brilliant. I don't know what that makes me, but good luck. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, the main event of the evening tomorrow night, live on Sky Sports and around the world on NBC's Peacock. For the WBO Cruiserweight Championship of the World, two of the top cruiserweights in the world. Over 70 fights between these two, with over 40 knockouts. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in store for a classic in a matchup between Poland and England. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing first to the scales, he comes to us with a professional record of 47 wins versus just five losses, with 31 of those wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Wrocław, Poland, introducing the former WBA Intercontinental, the former IBO Intercontinental, the former WBC International, and the former European Cruiserweight Champion. He is known as the Master. Here is Mateusz Masternak. He's looked very relaxed, very confident. As I said before, very happy all week, Masternak. I don't think he felt this opportunity would come. Official weight, 14 stone, 2 pounds for the Polish challenger, Mateusz Masternak. And he makes weight, as he always has, a consummate professional. And his opponent, the champion, making his return to Bournemouth, England. Introducing an individual that is the former British Commonwealth and European Cruiserweight Champion. He holds a professional record of 18 wins versus just one loss, with 12 of those wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the return of the King, his return to Bournemouth, and now the reigning, defending WBO Cruiserweight Champion of the World. Here's the gentleman, Chris Billam Smith.
official weight, 14 stone, 3 pounds, for the defending champion of the world, the gentleman, Chris Billum Smith. So we have a contest, both fighters safely making weight, and that WBO strap that you saw there on the stage is on the line for the first time under the stewardship, the ownership of Chris Billum Smith. Another thing I like about this, Johnny, is the choice of a title for the fight, Return of the King. Yeah, he would have had a hand in that, Billum Smith. He would have had to have agreed to that. It's almost a statement by itself. I can say, I, it's ambitious. Uh, I think it shows his intention as being a champion. And, and he doesn't want to ever let, let that go. He wants those challenges. He wants that. He wants to demand that respect from all the other fighters out there. And making this statement, having this fight, if there's ever a statement to be made in your first defense, it's this. Live worldwide on Sky Sports and NBC's Peacock. 12 three minute rounds for the WBO Cruiserweight Championship of the World. Poland versus England. The master versus the gentleman. Mateusz Masternak, Chris Billum Smith. Live tomorrow night. We're expecting ring walks tomorrow night around about 9 o'clock. At that point, we switch over from Sky Sports Arena to main event. So stick with us for a day of sport tomorrow. The football and the boxing. Willem Smith not accepting the offer of a handshake there from Master Nack, who I think found that quite entertaining, Matt. Nice and intense, that, as all good face-offs should be. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And look, I don't, I don't mind the not taking that. Maybe he just wants to keep that bit of thrust in us between him. I'm going to... Take, try and take your head off tomorrow night. I don't really want to shake your hand right now. That's okay. So as fighters like to say, the hard bit has been done. All the hard work, the preparation is in place. Final thoughts and final words before you go. What do you want to tell us ahead of tomorrow? Co chcesz powiedzieć? Jakieś ostatnie słowo przed jutrzejszą walką? Now important is only three words. And then you! Good luck. Chris Bill and Smith. I'm looking for more than three words. Uh, you got a great reception today. First time that we've had the public into these events. Just a little bit of a look into what we're going to have tomorrow. Just how important are these fans to you? It's a lazy thing to say like the 12th man in football, but these really do spur you on. Yeah, they've, uh, that's the reason we're here for a fourth time. From the first time we did it last summer, everyone turned out, produced an amazing atmosphere. I produced an amazing fight with Isaac, then we had knockout of the year, then world title last time, but they've been with me every step of the way, creating that atmosphere, and we do it together, so it's, uh, it's an honour to fight in front of these fans. The master and the gentleman, it's full of respect, but that shouldn't be taken for anything other than uh, what's going to lend to be a really good fight, we think, style-wise. Tell us how it goes when that first bell rings. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's an intriguing, intriguing fight for sure. If I was a uh, a casual, I'd be looking at it as a, as you know, or as a neutral, should I say, uh, as a, as a great fight. But um, I'm looking to put in a career best performance tomorrow night in front of this amazing crowd, sold out crowd in my hometown, defending champion, and uh, building a legacy as well. That's important to you. Yeah, and that's a, a great name, you know, a great great fighter in uh, in Masternick, and um, that's part of a, a another step towards creating that legacy. I'm going to ask you for two final words, uh, so help me out here. And still, please. And still. Good stuff. Okay, I could have gone either way. Good luck. Chris Billum Smith, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Gents, I just love the balance of this fight because in Billum Smith, as we've been discussing, you've got somebody who wants to really make a statement with a win here, having deliberately chosen a tough, tough opponent. And in Masternak, you've got someone who still really believes in himself who's lived the life all the way through, but he knows that this is it. He's never had a world title fight before, which is incredible when you think about it. 
and he won't get another chance after this and he knows it. Mask Nettina deserves his world title shot. He, he's, he's paid his service to our sport. When he walked off stage after the weigh-in, he was pumping air over there to the boys saying, yes, this is it. Time, my fans now. He really believes he's going to, there's going to, as far as he's, as far as they're concerned, there's going to be an upset. Uh, uh, and for Chris, Chris is calm. He's cool. He's got it together. He knows what he has to do. He has pride in being able to give something back to Bournemouth. Matt, your final thoughts? I think it's coming uh, at the right time for Chris Willem Smith. I think if this fight uh, had come a fight or two earlier, he might not have had the experience and the seasoning to, to, to beat someone like Mastanak. But I think if you look at the last three, four fights of his career, he, he, he's built up the opponent to improve. He's had a fight of the year with Isaac Chamberlain. He got clipped in the fight after that early doors, but came back to get a, one of the knockouts of the year, if not the knockout of the year. Then he goes and beats Lawrence Coley for the world title. In a scrappy, messy affair, but he found a way to beat a guy who was who had never been beaten and it was really awkward. So coming into this fight now, I think he's really bouncing into it with, uh, you know, momentum's a word that we use all the time, but he has got serious momentum coming into this fight. To members of the main event tomorrow night, I want to welcome the General Secretary of the British Boxing Board of Control to administer two awards. First to the British Boxing Southern Area British Boxer of the Year and the Southern Area British Boxing Training Trainer of the Year. I want to welcome back your defending champion tomorrow night, Chris Billum Smith, and his trainer and coach, Shane McGuigan. Well, this is a testament, really, to the year that these two have had. It was an unbelievable night outdoors at Bournemouth Football Club at the end of May. The scenes at the end, the scenes for the ring walk for Billum Smith were, were extraordinary. Fantastic night. One of the best nights I've ever been to was at Bournemouth at the football ground when this young man won a world title. So we're very proud of him. This is a really well achieved award for both these young, young men. Well done. You should be proud of Bournemouth. Bournemouth should be proud of this young man. Thank you. OK, very well said there by Robert Smith from the British Boxing Board of Control. We are all set. Join us tomorrow night from 6 o'clock on Sky Sports Arena. At 9 o'clock, we move as well over to Sky Sports' main event. We're expecting ring walks around about 9. Chris Billum smith with the first defence of that WBO World Cruiserweight title in what promises to be a very entertaining, possibly brutal affair against Matthias Masternak. <laughs>